All right, so today we're gonna do a complete disassembly of the Shark Navigator Liftaway. This is a model NV352, <clears throat> but this should work for the, the white ones, the, the lavender ones, the blue, win, blue ones, basically any Shark Navigator Liftaway 300 series. All right, starting with these uh, floor nozzles, to get the new uh, screws out, they're actually kind of a security bit. They uh, they look like this. They're a star shape with a hole in it. Um, I'll put a link in the description to where I get these. And the sizes vary totally uh, depending on the model. So I encourage you to get the whole set. But the set is like 10 to $15, something like that. There we go. That's the right size. And when you buy them, uh, you have to make sure you kind of get the longer ones so they can get into this one deep hole there. You can also get them in a kind of Swiss Army knife situation where the whole set is in one piece. Um, if you don't have one of these socket drives, I think it's a quarter inch. There's a few tricks to getting this off. There's a few screws you might miss. The ones you might miss are, there's two in this well here, one here and one here. You don't have to take off these. These just hold on these wheels. Uh, but there is two down here that you'll want to get. Uh, some others you might miss are right here under these wheels. There's two screws there. And to get those wheels off, you pop them out with a flathead screwdriver from the bottom. And then you can access those screws. So the rest of the screws are one, two, three, four, five, six, six more screws to get. All right, once you have the screws removed, you can remove this uh, bottom plate. I like to grab it from the bottom and that pulls it out. And once you get it kind of unhooked, I usually flip it over. That just makes a little bit more sense. You can go ahead and take off this plate and this hose. Uh, these hoses can be easily replaced uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to these. These can go bad. If you're losing suction, you might want to check to see if this hose has a break in it. A lot of times it will. All right, so first of all, getting the brush roll out, it's very easy. Uh, you just simply lift it up. It's got two slots there that they fit in. And getting the belt off. All right, so this particular one is a newer model, which means that it has screws here on the side of the motor for the brush roll. A lot of the older ones do not have this and you can simply lift it up. But in this case, we will need to take these screws out. Um, it's actually interesting though, even though the newer ones, you have to take these screws out of this and they mount on this side. The same brush roll motor will work with the newer ones or the older ones. They're the same motor and they fit in there the same or the same way that you originally did, but the newer ones just have this added extra mount ability. All right, so now we're ready to take the brush roll motor off. We're going to need some needle nose pliers for this um, to get the contacts off. It should basically lift out of this holster. You need to make sure the one of the cords is kind of stuck in this little uh, slot there. It kind of hangs it up a little bit. So once you get that free, you're ready to take these tabs off. Now these tabs are a lot harder than you might think. What I usually do is pull them up with my hands first so it disengages or engages the little latch that's on there. Um, Basically, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but there's a little tab and that tab is kind of at the rear of this, uh, these contacts. And you have to push down on that in order to remove these. If you don't, if you're just trying to uh, do this with your fingers or whatever, it'll be pretty frustrating. All right, so there is the brush roll motor removed. Uh, the next few things are the circuit board. If you're replacing the um, if you're replacing the brush roll motor, it's good to replace the circuit board too. You never know what could be causing the problem with that. Um, so yeah, with the circuit board, it's got two screws on it. All right, so when you're done with those two screws, this should lift right up, but you have one more screw to get. 
and that's in this mechanism here, which um, uh, disengage or lets the vacuum know when the uh, handle is down, so the brush roll motor can start. And once you have that removed, this whole unit will lift right out everything that's attached to that. You can see that's the swivel and the switch and the circuit board motor. So what you're left with is basically just the bottom plate. Okay, with the motor housing unit, um, the first thing I do with disassembling one of these is disassemble the elbow part here. And there is a way to disassemble that going through and taking the whole thing apart. But really, um, just the quickest and easiest way is to get a really good grip on it and pull it. You can see it kind of causes a little bit of white spot here. Uh, it's not great for the vacuum, but it does get this uh, does get this part out where it's easily able to be replaced. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is take off these latches. To do that, I flip it on its face. I'm gonna take this HEPA filter cover off first. You can see this is where we want to get this little uh, dowel. Now these really are best to push only one way. They have kind of grooves on one end So it's best to do it like I'm doing kind of have it resting on its face when you try to get to this now I use a, a little hole punch and If you're lucky you can use the hole punch and just with a little bit of pressure get this off It's a lot of pressure really, but uh, it's better than having to use a hammer to get that off because some of them will require that level of force. There it goes. All right, so when disassembling the rest of this unit, you're gonna need to start by taking off all the screws that you can. And there are a few places that you might miss. Um, but let's just go ahead and start with all the screws that we can easily see. We're gonna probably use, okay, this is the security bit. So there's five screws you can see on this uh, front plate and one that you can't, uh, cannot see. All right, so we got the five we can see and you can feel with your finger here, there is one that you can't see. And I just poke a hole into that stick. All right, before you can take anything apart though, um, I go ahead and take off these two screws back here on this part. Okay, so when you wanna lift this up, you wanna kinda of pull up on it, but we can't really do that right now because uh, the wires that go to this switch are going to be holding this kind of into place. Um, so we need to flip it over and we need to work with these screws now. There is one screw that is easy to miss and that's right here in the very back. Alright, so once you have those screws removed to take this off, you just kind of pry it off. It should come off fairly easily. Uh, you can take this floor nozzle latch piece off too. To get that off, you just need to use a, a Phillips screwdriver is what I use. And kind of pry it out of its spot. And it's got a little security bit there as well. Alright, so when looking at the motor, and this is kind of a guard for all the wires. And so what you really need to go ahead and do is take off these four screws that are holding on this plate to get to all the wires. And that's how you're gonna be able to take the rest apart. All right, with those screws taken apart, you can just pull on the cord there and it will expose these wires. Um, to take this cord off, there's two more little screws that you're going to need to take apart. Now if you needed to replace this cord, you can find these cords usually on eBay. Um, if you need to replace it, I usually cut these wires right at the furthest point I possibly can. There's only two wires to cut. And 
that gives you a little bit of room when you are reconnecting the wires. Okay, with the motor, it's similar, you just kind of pull it out. There should be this little uh, top on it as well. If this goes bad, it's a good time to replace that as well. Um, what I normally do with the motor is, since this blue wire is connected to the switch up there, I'll, I'll wait to take that off. Um, but I can go ahead and cut this uh, white wire that is going to the motor. So I'm going to wait for that blue wire to be exposed. But now that I have a little bit of slack here, I'm going to be able to take this, um, this off the switch here. Um, so to take this off, you pull up, and right about then you'll have enough leverage to go ahead and take this faceplate off. All right, so looking inside here, uh, you have this unit that lets you know uh, when the extension one is in place. And we have, again, these kind of difficult little, um, little holders for the wires and that you need to use needle nose pliers for. Again, the same process. Pull them down first so it engages the tab. Pull them down as far as you can with your hands so the tab is engaged. And then use your needle nose pliers grabbing at the at the back. There's really a, a very particular spot you need to grab on this, but if you just think almost all the way to the back, you're going to be pretty close. And this one is a little bit harder because it's not facing the correct direction. So we're going to use our screwdriver and pop it the rest of the way out. Now that we have plenty of slack. And that will give us the angle we need to take that off. You can usually find these on eBay too if you need to replace them. <clears throat> the final thing is this switch right here. And uh, you just simply take that off. In this case, we've got two Phillips head uh, screws to take that piece off. But what I really need out of this is this last screw for the motor uh, or rather this last uh, wire that's connected to the switch for the motor and that pretty much uh, does it um, you'll be able to see all the pieces that we took off and what we're left with after all of that and uh, most of these parts i'll link in the description if they can be found on uh, amazon or ebay I'll link them in down there. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.